Hey gang, what is up? Thank you for joining me. I had an idea for a secret latch, and even if you don't have a lathe, this would be pretty simple and easy to do with just a drill press and some, you know, ordinary woodworking tools. Let's get going. I may have gone a little much, but won't matter. It's going to get epoxied in place. Wow, that's interesting. It's attracted to the chuck, that last bit of distance. <laughs> yeah, man. So I need to cut it slightly down here at the end for this bronze insert. So both this magnet and bronze bushing um, ID is 0.25, quarter inch. So I put a little bit of a step there and made this part just slightly just a few thousandths under so it'll engage easier and then of course we'll chamfer it i'll put a countersink on this so it'll engage easier right but pretty simple should work now i should mention if you want to make a latch like this don't use a bolt the metal around it will it'll just act weird you could use just some non-ferrous metal and it could just be quarter inch and slip a barrel magnet right over it brass, aluminum, something like that. In other words, it doesn't really need that flange on the end. It could just be some quarter inch round bar with a barrel magnet epoxied in place on one end. And the latch is, you know, it's kind of like a sliding deadbolt. It needs something to catch it on the end or on the other end, which is actually the door. And so I had this little bronze bushing. I just turned a, a little chamfer uh, countersink, I guess you could call it, on one end. Now, somewhere in the video or description or somewhere, I stated that this was a half inch, but it started out as half inch round bar, and I turned it down a little bit so that the hole that I drilled to accommodate it, I could use a half inch drill bit. So I needed a little bit of slack. And there it is, not the prettiest machine work, but it'll work. And here I utilize another magnet, a strong magnet, to act as a clamp to hold that barrel magnet in place while the epoxy cures. All right, this poor piece of cherry has been utilized as a test piece for a lot of different applications, but wanted to check this latch before I do the actual hole into the, the rail, the style, I should say. All right, so I pulled this out of the clamps. Ah, put a little mark there. And so you can see, let me see. This naturally, well, there we go. So it naturally wants to um, attract like that. All right, so I did a voiceover here because I didn't feel like my original description was clear enough. Now, this magnet is axially magnetized. In other words, the poles are on the ends rather than on the sides of this barrel magnet. But you can see how well that works versus me flipping this over and it it'll drag it that way so it's attracted this way and it repels the other and i think i like the repel action better because the key whatever the key is made of it won't attract to this which means even if this gets small magnetic particles on there since it's not attracted uh, it won't scratch the surface as easily versus oppose it's it's opposing this to create that force so it's trying to push away so i think it'll work better as far as scratching the the lacquered surface but pretty foolproof simple should work forever and as i was laying up the door i made a sample to match the door thickness that is a pretty tight fit i really don't want to Put that in there, I could probably get it out, but I know it's gonna work. So this little flange will sit flush. I'll put it slightly, you know, recessed and then flush sand till those edges are perfectly flush to each other. And that should create a nice pocket for the, for the deadbolt. And now that I know this fits, I can take this off here, this little strip, I just hardly used any glue and I can uh, chamfer this edge so it'll engage easier. I just added a few rounds of tape to keep from marring that surface. 
And here's what I'm after, a perfect fit. It's probably a good idea to note that anytime you're working with magnets around spinning blades, router bits, bandsaw, table saw, you just really have to make sure that, that magnet's got, not going to be attracted to that blade or, or bit, right? And here I knew it wouldn't be a problem, so I ran this rail through utilizing this awesome L fence to get that veneer flush with this rail. And I don't always use a push stick here. I just felt that the blade was low enough. I have better control with my hands on it. Well, it's true. I've collected a few magnets over the years. Uh, just all types of different magnets. These are cylinder magnets in different sizes. You end up with small ones that break because they are so brittle. Neodymium. Um, there's another collection of magnets. I like disc magnets. They're what I use mostly in a lot of these, you know, secret latches and stuff that I that I make. Here's some square magnets. I don't know if I've used those before, but kind of cool to experiment what works and what doesn't. Uh, yeah. Magnets with holes in them. In here, these are pretty cool. These are cups. These are designed for magnets. And let me see if I can find one with a notch. Yeah, so I'll just make a notch with a file. See that? And then you can test, use these for tests. So you'll bore a hole this size they make magnets that are sized to fit all these different sized cups. The magnet will fit in there. Well, you'll, you'll bore a hole, screw this inside that hole, slip a magnet into it, and then you can make your, do your test. If it doesn't work, you can access the magnet through that notch, dig the magnet back out, and you know do something else, use a different size or whatever. Rather than trying to put a magnet in and glue it and it gets kind of tricky. So for this application, I think I'm gonna be using my most common size. This is a half inch diameter, eighth inch thick. And this is what I use to keep my pencil on my t-shirts with two of these. Let me get two of those out. Here comes my cat to move my tripod. Brah. You just gotta be really careful with these. They, if they collide, they tend to shatter. Let me move the camera angle and I'll show you what we got going on. Okay, so this is the final dimensions that I'm after, minus the tenons, right? And it'll be comprised of these four components, essentially like that. So to test my magnet strength, I can simply use two of these. Right? And that'll be the strength of the magnet. This is my latch. We'll see if I got this in the right orientation. So it attracts that way. It repels by flipping it over. That'll activate the catch quite aggressively. And then of course the two halves will also attract to each other quite well. So almost, Almost too much. I could probably use uh, a three eighths. I was going to put two magnets. I don't know if it needs it. Mm, I might experiment with a three eighths before I bore the holes. But anyway, can't access any of this after the fact, so got to make sure it's foolproof. So I decided to go with a three eighths. These are three eighths by three thirty seconds. Plenty strong. I'm going to use two of them, and using a Forstner bit to to get the depth right and also the center and I check the center of course and the depth by drilling at the end that way I can get it out easily and if you're a little bit deep that's fine because you can make that up with with epoxy I'm going to use epoxy to glue these in place even though the veneer will be holding it as well but if it's too if it's proud then that's hard to deal with they're hard to sand and they're hard to get just a little bit deeper, so check that depth. At this stage, I had realized that the magnets fit fairly loose, so it wasn't a problem putting them in place. I'll test fit everything, remove the magnets, add the epoxy, and we're good to go. All right, got these out of the clamps, 
and this one is yeah this one's a key I think it is X oh yeah yeah this one has half inch magnets this one has three eighths magnets so this one will activate the latch should work pretty well and then they adhere together pretty well with the magnets these will have a panel in here something like that so there's a slight amount of space between these and this will go into place like that and that this is what will house the key the magnetic key of course this will all be cut to size and look a lot better but anyway <laughs> yeah man i find it really gratifying satisfying to be able to make a key or hide a magnet somewhere within the wood and it's just completely you know invisible i love that part of hidden catches and magnetic catches and all that jazz. Many times you can, you know, depending on the thickness of the veneer, you can put a chamfer, like a 45 degree chamfer, and right where that transition is, it the seam will completely disappear. So this is the piece that has the magnets in it. This will be uh, glued in place, you know what I mean, with the panels, it'll be glued in solid. And then this guy will be the key so that should work. And of course, this will get cut flush uh, with this distance here. This gets another rail that goes all the way across that integrates with these tenons. And I just need to sand everything smooth, fit the top rail, and then I can fit this in between. And I can probably even offset the height of this to not match the one in the back, but actually create a little bit of downward pressure. That way I can have a little bit of slack right, un right underneath this rail so it's not so hard to get in and the magnetic force will drive it down. Okay, so I have part of the footboard, the top of the footboard put together. And let me set this in place here. Hey, Scoozy. So I'm going to bring this forward and clamp this just so that's down tight and it doesn't fall. Okay. All right, now these are cut with an offset of the magnets. That's, that's about right. Tight enough where it won't fall out. Good attraction from the magnets. And a hidden in plain sight key, <laughs> right? All right, so I'm getting ready to fit the panel to the middle section of this footboard. There's a panel right there, and I've made this square uh, reference. And I've marked it top, and I know that this corner is uh, under, acute, as is that opposite, diagonal corner, acute, and then of course these are obtuse, slightly open, and I mean thousands of an inch, but I can just see a little bit of daylight there. The panel wants to fall if i put it against here it'll stick because it's contacting here and there slight gap right there so i can use that as a reference to start cutting the panel and tr truthfully i should have made this when i did the glue up uh during the glue up you know things are kind of stressful you're trying to work quickly i thought i got it pretty square and i knew it could be off no big deal at all it'll be easy to fit but with this reference panel i can do that all right, I'm really close to getting this to fit. And what I started doing was using some tape. So this is three layers of tape and I can put it in here and gauge how that fits and then take this to the saw and use it as a spacer. So this is about 13, if I remember right, about 13 thousandths or let's see, I'll grab these calipers. Yeah, 0.35 millimeters. And this one is 
0.25 millimeters. The numbers don't really matter. I just need those as a spacer. And another thing I started doing is I'm putting a three degree back bevel on this. So as this door goes in, it, uh, it, won't, it won't bind as bad or rub as bad, I should say, till the very end. But yeah, patience. <laughs> All right, at this stage, I've got this just fitting about perfectly. I need to touch it up with a hand plane and maybe take a little off the top. I could probably have a small gap at the top and it won't really be visible. Also, you may have noticed I opened my garage door to take advantage of that light. The light coming in from behind made a huge difference. I could see exactly where any little discrepancies were and just patiently fine-tuned everything till I got a really good fit. All right, this is a testament to a good layout using those center marks and keeping that handle on the router oriented the same direction. It's going to ensure that everything's going to line up just like that. This is a little bit a little bit tight still. I've added uh, three pieces of tape or two pieces of tape down at the bottom. So that's the amount of gap it'll have at the bottom. I'll probably do the same thing at the top. Um, it just goes in. I'll try it without the tape and see how it works. I need to allow a little bit for lacquer as well. Of course, the inside of the frame will have lacquer. The edge of the door will have lacquer. Those four mil or whatever, it's it adds up. So I'll probably end up lacquering the the footboard and then fitting the door and planing a little bit off it just to sneak up on an absolute perfect fit but yeah super happy with that Have to go to the other side to open it <laughs> also i use slightly smaller test screws and then later i'll put the black ones in place well that came out uh perfect centered this way centered this way <laughs> However, I should have, oh, wasn't thinking, I needed to drill this bigger part first, then I would have had a small dimple, then I could have dr drilled this smaller hole. So this is 0.375 and I made this uh, 4.375, so 7 16 um, So now I'm going to have to figure out how to make a little counter bore really tricky it doesn't really need it i could take it off i think i'll put a maybe a bevel on this at the lathe and then i can just counter countersink a slight mating surface for that uh, i'm gonna epoxy it in it it should be fine here i can utilize two opposing chuck keys and get that to zero in or at least within a couple of thou now, a lot of these operations could be done with a simple drill press, but I love using a lathe and I have this small one at my shop and a larger one that I have access to at my dad's shop. So this countersink in my chuck is what I'll be using to bore the door edge and this piece of aluminum is just something parallel that I can match that gold colored insert to the correct angle. This was totally worth it and it worked out well. Oh, by the way, I've got an excerpt from an Instagram post, and the sound is horrible, so I apologize in advance. But anyway, here we go. Buongiorno, mi amici. <laughs> Good morning, my friends. I just want to show you my brand new, to me, Atlas Lathe. It's a 1967 model. When I found this thing, it was completely slathered in grease and grime. I completely dismantled it, cleaned it rewired it and in that process i've learned a lot about how it works there's a lot of moving parts a lot going on in the machinist lathe you know my dad was a master machinist and i really wish i would have paid attention more as a kid i could have learned a lot from him that's okay i'll figure it out i just finished making this heavy duty walnut stand with a bird's eye maple cabinet with continuous drawer handles and soft closed drawer guides a buddy of mine made this oil and chip pan for me, and I tell you what, I am so, so excited to learn how to use this beautiful little beast. 
Thanks for watching. That should work. You give a little place for epoxy as well. Since this door edge is slightly beveled, I'll probably sand it, you know what I mean? Because this door edge is beveled a couple of degrees. But it's enough where I can check it and make sure the latch is working. Yeah. All right, here's a big test. <laughs> oh, incidentally, I made this side tight where it's kind of springy so that this door, once it's released from the latch, will pop out automatically. So let's see how things work. That's where the key is located. That's how you find the spot. And then latched. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that, that's going to work. It's actually, the movement seems opposite because, you know, that's released, that's locked. But it's not like customers going to be in here all the time, you know what I mean? But uh, then the key, yeah, lives right here. All right, so here's a crude, uh, but hopefully effective rendering of, of the door. So this would be the door and this bronze bushing. It goes into this little cavity here. I just drilled a 3 8 hole. This is 3 8 It has a half inch flange, I believe, or 7 16 I don't remember, but these, are, these sizes are really irrelevant. It really depends on, on the sizes of material that you use. And then the magnetic latch is here. And this is just a piece of aluminum rod with a flange. And I turned this on my lathe, so it started as half inch round, and I reduced all this material to quarter inch, put a chamfer on the end here, and then I added this barrel magnet. You can see that. And then I added epoxy to hold it in place. And then the door style has a slightly larger hole than this, and that fits into there, and then it's capped with this uh, 1 16th slice of veneer. So hopefully that that makes sense. You can see that hole in the in the veneer there for the rod to come through that's capped over this rail or the style I should say and then that will engage into this bronze bushing. I thought it'd be better to put a bronze bushing or a bushing of some sort um, rather than just a hole in the edge of the door. So hopefully that makes sense. I just absolutely love, love, love creating hidden compartments, especially when I can use magnets for, you know, the secret latch. Check out this fit. 4,000 slack, and now I can, you know, the customer will be able to, to remove and replace that key easily. So by the time you're seeing this, the awesome, wonderful client had came out, showed up with his friend who is another client of mine, and they were just laughing and giggling like a couple of schoolgirls. We had an awesome time loading everything. They were just grinning ear to ear. He was so pleased with the bed and the dresser and nightstands. On the key, you may have noticed a little black dot of ebony that I put that designates up. I also put some felt so it wouldn't scratch the lacquer as it's being used. But yeah, hopefully you got enough information. You can make your own secret compartments and latches and magnetic catches and incorporate them into your work. Thank you for watching. I absolutely appreciate it.